Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Naeem Mohaiman. Um, I want to start out by saying that uh, this was my first election as a US citizen. I became naturalized in 2013, so it was quite the introduction to American democracy. And my uh, remarks will be uh, about that as well. As an obsessive about history, I look to the past as a prologue to the future. On January 20th, I want to think of years in the past as bookends and tidal changes, to remember how far people traveled in their bodies and minds, and as a way to think past the shock of this moment of reversal. The first set of years is 1924 and 1967. The United States Racial Integrity Act was passed in 1924, banning interracial marriages in the United States. 1967, then, was the year of Loving versus Virginia, the Supreme Court case that struck down the Racial Integrity Act. The case was brought by Mildred Loving, a black woman, and Richard Loving, a white man. They had been sentenced to prison in Virginia for marrying each other. In pleading the case, Richard, a bricklayer with a blonde buzz cut, told his lawyers only this, tell the court I love my wife. The Loving case came back in 2013 when it was cited as precedent in court rulings striking down restrictions against same-sex marriage in the United States. The second set of years I want to remember are 1924 again and 1965. The National Origins Act and Asian Exclusion Act were both passed in 1924 restricting immigration of Southern Europeans and Eastern Europeans, especially Jewish migrants. It also restricted the immigration of Africans and outright banned the immigration of Arabs and Asians. This was the law of the land for 40 years until the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 finally removed the national quotas. We are in a time today when political forces want to return us to 1924 or even earlier. Perhaps the true meaning of the Red Hat slogan is, Make America 1860 again. <laughs> this is a time when ethno-nationalist forces want to decide who we can love and who is welcome in this country and who should be brutally expelled. But it's never possible to run back to the past, much as the new regime may dream of that. In this context, I remember two very recent moments. In October 2013, I became a naturalized citizen. The presiding judge at the ceremony was the granddaughter of a Russian Jewish emigre who came over on boat steerage. The room was filled to capacity with migrants of color, precisely the dark hordes the incoming regime plays fear politics with. In 2016, a week after the election, I attended the Philadelphia wedding of my cousin. In the couple's presence on stage, a Bangladeshi Muslim man and his Virginia-born white male partner I could see the sum of all fears for the incoming regime. <laughs> it is necessary to talk about the past within these dark times to remember how far this country traveled and how it may find its way back again. Remember that while white supremacy talks about again, we can also talk about again in a very different register. The again as a place of return can and must be sharply different for us. Ours can be a place of imagining that is the antithesis of fear. In the coming years, our future depends on being able to imagine better. Thank you.